Hello everyone. Today we have a, a really nice, easy acrylic painting for you and the whole family. Uh, it's a beautiful little landscape scheme, scene. You can do this in any color. It's got two basic colors. I've used black and red uh, with gray in the background, gray down below. You can use any colors you want. So whichever colors that go with your color scheme in the house, your room, the room that you intend to put it in, use those two colors. For the purposes of today's lesson though, this is the color we're going to be using. Okay, let's get started. If you've got those four colors, three colors, two main colors and white to mix, and then whatever other color you want to add in. Now my paints are a little bit more liquid than yours, so um, I don't put too much water in mine, but you might have to thin yours out a little bit with water. I'm going to mix a little bit of black into the white. Um, when you, as I said before, when you mix your colors, you take a little bit of the dark color and then mix the white into it to lighten it. And you can see it doesn't, it doesn't need a lot of black to make quite a dark gray. So I've made a pale gray there. Always remembering that the bottom section of the canvas is going to be lighter than that. So if that's too light, you can add a little bit more black in. Now for my top section, I'm actually just gonna add just a touch of blue in there as well. So it's just got a hint of blue. If you've got purple, if you've got green, you want to add that, go for it. So it just takes it a little bit away from the gray. My horizon is going to be below the medium line again. So below the middle line, my horizon is going to be just below that. I'm going to use that gray and go all the way across. And then paint all the way up to the top of the canvas with that color. If you have to mix more color as you go, that is fine. Gonna get a few streaks in there, which is absolutely fine. I'm mixing colors as I do this because I didn't mix enough. So there's a bit more blue in that one. And if you have a 3D, all right, if you do, remember go all the way around the sides as well. When you're ready to move on, I'm going to just take what I've got here, which is that darker gray, and I'm going to add a bit more white to it to make it slightly lighter. This is a subtle picture, so I've gone with subtle colors for this. And I'm going to put the whole of that lighter color on the bottom section of the canvas. Keeping my horizon again. And for stretch canvas, go around the side as well. around the bottom. Okay, that's my background done with my biggest brush. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add um, the land detail. So I've taken this big round brush. I'm going to load black. So whichever color have you, whichever color you guys have chosen, that's the color, the darker color is going to be your land mess. So I'm going to use black. Load that on my brush. And I'm going to paint straight across the horizon with that black paint. Your 
background might still be a bit wet, it's fine. It can mix on the canvas because I've got a stretch canvas. I'm going around the side as well. So I've got it all the way around the side. And it really doesn't matter if it mixes and gets some gray there. It's just a landmass in the distance. So this is different contours on that land mass if you take it at that as a distance thing. Right, I'm going to give myself some small hills, which means coming from the left, don't have to be perfect. You can see mine are wobbly, which is absolutely fine because that means I've got tree detail and rocks on the top of that mountain there, on that little mountain in the distance. I'm going to put a few more interesting shapes in there and take it up towards the left as well. Your land masses, so you make them look like you want. I'm not going to take them too high though, because we want the trees in that section there. And you can see mine's mixed in with the gray, so I've got some different brush strokes there. It all adds in very nicely. put some black back in there but and go around the sides of the canvas as well and make sure that you've painted your mountains your land mass around the side as well and when you've painted in your land masses wash your brush off load it with plain white and with this white you can just add some highlight detail onto your mountains. I'm just going to twist a little bit of white into the top and around the edges of those mountains like that. Not losing all of the black. I don't know if you can see that there. Just a few blobs of white in my mountains, which I'm also going to take around the edge of the canvas. Right, let's get on to some trees. For that, I'm going to use this thinnest brush for the detail. So load up the brush with some black. I'm twirling it across the side so I can get a tip with that. Nice edge, not too much paint on the brush. Just remember, don't put your trunks like a regimented post, fence post. Trunks are thinner, fatter, in front, behind, closer, further apart. So they're all different. So I'm going to put my first one not quite in the center. I'm going to put my first one down there. And it's a wiggly one, which is excellent because trunks are wiggly. I'm going to put a smaller one beside it there and maybe another big one there but slightly taller. So I'm just making them different, different sizes. And I'm bringing them down through about halfway through the middle of my landscape as well. My, I've got a very low horizon on this land mass. I'm going to put a smaller one in the background there and then a bigger one there. Maybe another one there, smaller one behind it there. Not too many. Whatever you do here has to be reflected below. So don't do too much. You can always add in some more later. And in fact, the less is actually more sometimes. Well, I'm gonna put some branches on these. My branches will go be growing upwards. So I'm gonna wiggle a few branches in like that on that tree. And remember it's thinner at the top and thicker as it goes towards the trunk. Branches always thinner at the top. If you find that you've painted something thicker, like this is a thicker edge on this branch here, make sure it's as thick when it hits the trunk. 
because they don't, branches don't grow fatter, they grow thinner. I'm going to put a few branches on this one, like that. One or two little branches there. Maybe one or two on this. Your trees, just be creative with your branches. Some in the thinner. And that's my tree masses. Don't think I'm going to do any more than that. I need to use my darker gray for the water. The reflection of the trees is going to be a darkish gray or a watery color. So watercolors, as long as it's lighter than the trees at the top. And because it's a reflection, I'm going to just wiggle that in there. So that I started with my tallest tree so that I know all my other trees are going to be slightly shorter than that. So just give yourself a reflection like that in the water. So there you go. It's a little bit wiggly because the water can be a bit rippled. Now my branches. That branch there, I'm going to put in here. That one's a bit higher there. That's got a branch coming off there. So as long as you make it a mirror image, you're doing well. <laughs> as thin as you can make these branches. Try not to get too thick with them. You can always add thickness, you can't take it away. Now, if you wanted to do something a little bit more creative and because you guys have done watercolor, you could take a dry brush. I've got a dry brush here. And just with a dry brush, just run that dry brush when the watercolor's a little bit drier. Not quite dry, a little bit drier. This is still a little bit wet, I think. Okay. I don't want to rub all of that detail off, but it just gives a little bit more of a watery feel. Now, because I've made this my, my biggest tree, it's not quite in the middle again. So because I've made that my biggest tree, my leaves are going to be higher on this tree. And as we did yesterday, we start off, start our leaves off way away from the branches. We presume something's joining them. Okay, so I'm going to wash that brush and load it up with red. Now, for my leaves, I'm going to start from my highest tree. I'm going to start with my leaves like that. I still have to see some, so I'm blobbing some leaves on there. I still have to see some space, some sky space underneath. You will see the sky through this, so don't make your leaves too tight, too close together. But I'm going to use plain red. And that red, I'm going to grow my leaves. This tree here had a few leaves to the outside edge of that tree there, a few underneath as well. And your red is a bit thicker than mine. So when you go over your branches, you'll probably cover the branches, which is fine. Mine's a little bit watery, so. Just 
Don't forget, you will see some sky through there. So that tree now. And I've got a different level on my tree line. If you've put your trees further apart, absolutely fine. As long as you have different levels on your trees, because it's got to be interesting for the eye. There we go, I'm coming to put some there and I'm putting some on my little trees in the background, like that. And because they're in the background, they will be behind this trunk here. You can put a few little red dots of fallen leaves at the base of your trees as well. Okay, when you're happy with your tree leaves, we're going to make a pink. So it's literally adding in some red to the white to make a pink. Whichever color leaves you've used, we're going to make a lighter color for the reflection underneath. And as we did the tree trunks, that's how we're going to do our tree reflections. So I started this tree up there. I'm going to start putting in my leaves in a paler color, either a pink or if you've, if you've got watercolor, then it's more of a watery red. So I'm going to start putting in some leaves which match the ones above. Kind of goes like that. This one starts about there. And the trick should be when you turn your image upside down, you should still be able to see your trees. While that is still a touch wet, I might just take that dry brush and run it over. Oh, mine's already dry. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> well, that doesn't help in the slightest. Well, I don't want to rub too much of those leaves away. So, my acrylics dry very, very quickly. There we go, just a few of them. <laughs> Put a little bit of a ripple in there. But I can also put some ripples in by loading my little brush, wash the little brush off and load it with white paint and then put some thin ripple lines in the water here and over my trees. A few little ripple highlights. There we go. That's it, mine's done. That's how quick that one was. <laughs> nice quick picture. <laughs> All that's left for me to do on this one is sign. So, there we go, sign. <laughs> 